Hi guys, how are you doing? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Neil. If you've not been here before, please do not forget to click subscribe or give me a thumbs up so my future content shows up in your news feed. Today we're going to talk about the Solar Type X, finally, and I'm also going to discuss some little guitar gadgets. I'm going to discuss in this video little tips, little gear gadgets, little things that I use that I probably don't mention on the channel very often, but they're things that I think are really useful and that I really like. Okay guys, so first of all, it was becoming increasingly obvious quite some time ago now that Solar Guitars were going to release some kind of ML type shape guitar. Um, Ola is a big fan of Dimebag and probably a big fan of those guitars too. I've seen him with a lot of stealth and things like that. And he has made the Type X. Now the Type X to me is more like a star type shaped guitar rather than a classic, you know, ML or uh, Washburn stealth or Dean stealth or any of that. Now I'm particularly interested in this guitar myself because for those of you that don't know, many moons ago before I was a Jackson um, in Darcy, I used Dean guitars quite a lot and I had about four Razorbacks that I used to use live and I just loved them, you know, I loved the way they sat on the strap when I stood up um, and I also liked the scale length of the guitar as well because actually I play better on a 24.75 inch scale length than I do on a 25.5 inch scale length. I know it's only a small margin but for some reason I've noticed that I do play a bit easier and a bit quicker on a shorter scale length. Solar Guitars have launched these stunning star-shaped Type X guitars. There's a lot of variations of them. For me at the moment, the green one with the Floyd Rose, which is a regular six string, is the one that really, really jumps out to me. I'm gonna put the guitars on the screen as I'm actually talking about them and discussing them so you guys can see which one we're looking at. The green one there, uh, it retails here, it looks like US, it's uh, $1,099. It's an awesome guitar. These guitars are made in Indonesia. I think there's a European made one that costs quite a bit more, quite a lot more actually, probably three times as much. But yeah, we're gonna talk about these ones that are more affordable for guys like me and you today. And the green one jumps out at me. I'm gonna click on it now because I need to know the exact specs. If I get this wrong, everyone will be jumping all over me. So it's pre-order at the moment and it says shipping around May the 30th, 2023. Guitars are quite behind, to be honest, at the moment. Um, I've been waiting for a Schecter Evil Twin for quite some time now, a Solo 2, that's, uh, Solo 2, sorry, that's, um, I've been waiting a good year for that, so things are behind, but some brands are, are somehow getting them out, especially out of this Indonesian factory. Anyhow, in this super, I'm going to call it Kawasaki Green, because uh, the Jacksons that are this green are called Kawasaki Green. You know, it's like, a, it's a neon green. It looks absolutely fantastic. It's satin. I prefer satin guitars to gloss, so that suits me as well. Now, when we talk about the shape of this guitar, this bottom spike, point, whatever you want to call it, I don't know, um, it's shorter, which makes it not like an ML or a, a Dean Stealth or a Washburn Stealth or anything like that. Personally, I would have liked that to have been the same length so it did look like one, you know? And I don't know whether he'd have been breaching some copyright thing or whatever if he'd have done that with the guitar, but I think I'd have preferred it to be a touch longer. And the main reason actually is because when you stand it, when you're finished with it, if you're trying to lean it up somewhere, Obviously, it will fall over. You need a guitar stand. You know, you can't just lean it against a set of drawers or anything. It will fall over with one point longer than the other. So that's one thing that bugs me about it. But I still absolutely love the guitar. It's very close to a guitar which I talked about on the channel a while ago by Legion Guitars. They are making an exact shape of these. I hope these don't affect the sales of Legion Guitars because they're a smaller, much smaller brand than Solar. But um, yeah, it looks absolutely fantastic. I'm going to click through various things of it. I don't know what the neck is going to be like. I'm trying to look at the access behind there and it looks like it fattens out towards the body gradually. Um, you know, the strap button is in the right place behind the neck because if it isn't on these types of guitars, it, you get neck dive basically and it's terrible. So that's something good that he's done, but he will know about this already obviously from the amount of washburns and deans that he's had. One really important thing that I want to mention, and it's a massive high five to solo guitars, is this. Because this should be happening with all brands, in my opinion. You get a hard 
case with this guitar. I'll put that up now on, on your screen and on my screen as well. And this is something that should be happening. When you spend a thousand pounds on a guitar, no matter where it's from, in my opinion, you should be getting a hard case with that guitar, especially if it's a pointy guitar, because when they're just in a box and they get dropped, the points get chipped. And I know from talking to Jackson Guitars, King V's, things like that, it's so hard to get a Rhodes in particular, or a King V out to somebody without it having damaged points. So, you know, credit to, to, to Solar for doing that. I remember when I was young and I first started playing guitar and I got an Ibanez RG570 and it came with a hard case and anything over 500 quid basically came with some sort of case back then. And I think when you're spending a thousand pounds, thousand dollars, whatever on a guitar, it should come with a hard case. Of course it should, you know, and they can make those, you know, they couldn't, even if it's just like a soft foam type zip up case, um, it, it's it's going to protect it and, and it and it should have a case. You shouldn't have to fork out another couple of hundred quid and try and find one of these pointy guitars are not easy to find case, uh, cases for. In fact, I'm actually wondering if the reason Solar have put a case with this guitar is because they know that this is a unique kind of shape and it's going to be pretty hard to find a case that fits it. Um, so I'm wondering if they've done it because of that reason. But it's really good that they include it with it and don't make you buy it afterwards. I think that's really cool. Uh, Full marks to them for that. Really is a biggie for me. So it's neon green, mahogany body. It's got no binding. It's got a Floyd Rose Special trem. Now, this is, a, this is a downside for the guitar. I think that a guitar that is up there around the £1,000 area should have a 1000 or a 1500 which is one with like titanium. Um, so let me show you this. Guitar here, you see how we don't want to bang it. Can you see how the screws have been hot rodded? This is a hot rodded uh, Floyd Rose special that Sheck to do, and, and they've changed the screws and everything to titanium to make it a bit harder wearing. Um, I don't have any issue with Floyd Rose special trems, I've had them on loads of guitars and I quite like them. And they, they stay in tune once you get them set up and everything, and, and they've all worked fine. My Floyd Rose special, I don't have an issue with them, but I just think. For the money, you know, a thousand dollars, thousand pounds, whatever, it should have a Floyd 1000 really, but maybe that's why you're getting the case, you know, maybe that's case money that they've used their case money out of the budget. So it's, there's no left handed version, no pick guard, thank God. Um, the pickups in this are the regular Duncan Solar pickups that are in most Solar guitars. People swear by these pickups. I really want a Solar guitar on the channel really bad. You know, like really bad. I have done for quite a while and I'm hoping to get one of these one way or another on the channel because I really do love them. Um, you can uh, coil split the, the pickups on this guitar, which is quite unique for a guitar that's pointy. My King V actually over there has a coil split. I don't use it, but it has one. Um, but that's quite unique for a pointy metal guitar, I guess. So let's go down here. So the fingerboard material is ebony. That's all it says. Um, again, 25.75 inch scale. That will help a guitar that is this kind of shape balance really well. I hope that it's got a nice thin neck on it and it hasn't got a Dean neck with, you know, a Dean ML type neck, or, which is like a V shape neck on the, the Razorbacks, um, on the Razorbacks I owned. And it's not, it's okay, but once you get used to that, when you go to another guitar, it feels a bit weird. It's a bit of a handful, to be honest. I like a slim C type shape neck. So we'll have a look. It's got 22 jumbo frets on it. It's not got 24 frets. Now for me, they could have crammed on, even though it's a 24.75 inch scale guitar, they could have crammed on 24 frets. Um, I think like they do on an ESP or an LTD EC1000. That's a short scale as well, like a 24.75, but that has 24 in you, 24 <laughs> frets on, sorry. Um, so yeah, it's got the logo on the Solar logo. It's in green on this guitar. I think I'd have preferred that to be um, just a normal color, you know, a normal inlay color, but it, it, it pops out a bit. I don't know whether that looks a bit cheap in green, but nevertheless, the guitars are awesome anyway. For me, <laughs> in my opinion, the guitars are awesome. It doesn't really matter these little things that I'm picking at because it just looks that good. I don't really care about all the things that are not absolutely perfect. You're never going to get a guitar 
that is perfect for you, unless you get a custom, obviously. Um, so yeah, the logo's there, that's in green. I love solar headstocks. I've done a really good job of make, creating a headstock. It's so hard to create a good, attractive headstock these days, because it's all been done. But uh, yeah, totally cool. Let's have a look at the machine heads. It just says solar machine heads, they'll be like die cast. Right, the neck profile is C-shape. I don't know what solar necks are like, whether they're thin and fast or not. You'd think they would be, and I don't know whether they're all the same, but this just says C-shape. So let's hope it's a fast, thin, neck obviously it's got the locking on it's set through neck truss rod neck dual action i am wondering why the truss rod is up there behind a cover and not down near the neck pickup i prefer them just there so you can just you don't have to mess around you can just stick an allen wrench in and change it on the fly i quite like that a lot of guitar brands are doing that now and um, i don't know why these haven't done it but never mind um, but yeah, it looks absolutely great. Now this is the Floyd version, and at the moment this is only available in this uh, neon green, I believe. That's the six string. This guitar was the last one that Ola and or Solar guitars showed us, and I think I might go for this one. It's not in any crazy colours. It's um, a tunematic bridge, which is one of my favourite bridges now. Again, like I said about the scale length, 24.75 inch scale length, I'm a bit quicker and get around a bit easier because of my small hands on that type of guitar. But also I found that I play better on a tunematic bridge a bit quicker and I think it's to do with string spacing. I know these are only millimetres we're talking here, but that narrower string spacing, again, it's less space that you have to cover when you're playing if you're pulling off some kind of fast you know lick or whatever which i don't do very much but it just makes it easier for me and i feel a bit quicker with a tunematic style bridge it's nice that this shape guitar's out with a tunematic style bridge uh, you know not like a hardtail and um, for the guys that do like hardtail bridges there is another guitar that i'm going to show you in a minute um everything's the same here with this guitar i'm just trying to find out Trying to find out. So this is called Carbon Matte. Mahogany body again. I think everything is the same. They're just the same. The specs are the same. Possibly the nut width might be narrower. Um, Floyd nuts, 43 mil. And sometimes when you have a hardtail guitar, it has a slightly different nut width uh, on. So it could be a different nut, nut width up there, um, but I don't know. I'm not sure. But yeah, I love that one. It looks mean. You can't go wrong because it's matte black. You know, you can't go wrong with that colour if you play metal. It's awesome and it looks great. And I think I need a guitar that's not got a Floyd on in my collection. So I, I, I don't know. I might get in touch with them see if they'll send me one out first of all. So here's an Evertune version. I'm not going to look at the seven strings because... Uh, I don't care too much about seven strings, although I do need one of those as well to just to get in, in drop B. Um, but yeah, so we've got one with an Evertune style bridge as well. Same specs again. This one is $1,299. Um, so this one's a bit more expensive, but you'd expect that with the Evertune bridge. I don't know much about Evertunes. Uh, my guitars have all got Floyd on, so they don't go out of tune anyway, really. You know, minor tweaks, that's all you need. Uh, we'll check this colour out here. This is interesting. Oh, it's natural. It's like a natural colour. It's called Age Natural Matte Natural. That's nice. You know, it's got like a, a stain on it. So that's the aged look. But yeah, I like that one too. We're going to go down now because this one's insane. This is so goddamn sick. This colour. Look at that. Cannibalismo. Now, I made a video when a neon pink, because Solar Guitars, I don't know if you know, but if you like pink guitars, like I do, bright coloured stuff, they do the best neon pink that I've ever seen any guitar brand ever do. It's so bright. It's absolutely gorgeous. And they did a cannibalismo of a regular shaped solar guitar, you know, super strat. And it looked absolutely great. And it was the most interesting guitar, I think I said, that year that was released. I can't remember what year that was. But yeah, cannibalismo looks absolutely awesome. Sick as hell. Shame it's not got a Floyd and it's got an Evertune for my preference. But same specs again, it's called Blood Red Open Paw with Blood Splatter. It just looks awesome, you know. That's for your real extreme metal players. A bit more expensive, 1399 The frets, by the way, are stainless steel. Oh, that's something I didn't notice. 
let's go back 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 let's go to the first one right so the frets on this is just it just says super jumbo on the other guitars but when you get to this one let's check the, these other guitars because it would be nice if they had stainless steel frets on fret wire nickel so yeah the cannibalismo is the one so maybe when you hit that 1400 ish dollar pounds whatever um, that's when you start hitting the the higher spec for the fret wire and everything you get stainless steel frets swamp ash body that's how they do the whole open pour thing. Massive fan of Swamp Ash Bodies. I've got my favourite guitar is actually got an Ash Body on. I absolutely love it. That is the Jackson DK2 Green Glow. I don't know if you've seen that one. This is purple. I love purple. It's my favourite colour. That's why my back lights are purple. And that's why my seat is purple because I absolutely love it. My hallway is purple as well. And the wife was not happy when I painted that hallway purple. Let me tell you about that. So metallic purple. Shame it's not satin but i guess you gotta please the guys that want a gloss finish uh it's metallic purple oh the body is older on this guitar it's not mahogany strange that's strange evertune f type bridge stainless steel frets oh and it's a longer scale this must be a seven string oh yeah i've clicked on a seven string oh damn i was hoping the purple was going to be in the six string version so this is a seven string that's why the scale length is 25.5 because it helps the tuning you can't really have a shorter guitar seven string what you could do probably but i've never seen one that's for sure graphite nut so yeah pretty cool absolutely love the damn things if i'm honest really love these guitars and i want to get all of them for the channel even if it's just a demo to see if i like it to see if uh, it feels, you know, like back in the day when I used to use the Razorbacks and stuff. Really good job solo guitars have done of this guitar. And it's happened before whatever's going to happen with Dimebag's guitars. Obviously, Dimebag guitars aren't going to happen at Dean anymore because they've fallen out with Rita. Uh, so I don't know what's going to happen, but Olo's got these coming out sooner than whatever's going to happen with the new Dimebag guitars. Uh, I think Rita's going to court or something um, regarding the stealth ship and the Razorback ship and stuff and basically putting his name on any guitars. So it'll be interesting to see what happens there. But all I've got these out, um, all I've got these out in good time, in my opinion. But yeah, they look absolutely fantastic. Love them. Love that sort of shape. I love V-shaped guitars stood up. And this is very similar. Probably love this type of ship a bit more. Um, but the beauty of this is that like, obviously with a V you have to have a strap on to hold a <laughs> strap on. You have to have a strap on to hold up the, the V guitar. Um, with this you don't, it sits on the knee pretty cool. It'd be nice to see how it balances on the knee. I've watched all the all those video with the green one really closely. And he doesn't seem to be struggling or fighting with it at all, so I think it might sit just fine on the knee. Um so yeah, excellent. Absolutely love these guitars. Can't wait to get one on the channel. I probably will get one one way or another. I don't know how yet right so let's whoa everything's wobbling right so let's get on with the next part of the video i'm going to talk about little things that i use that i love products you know things that i use um guitar wise that i swear by that i don't really talk about that much and the first thing right so right now i'm filming on an iphone and it's only an iphone xr Okay, it's nothing special. I've had it absolutely ages and some people get in touch with me sometimes and say, what camera are you using? It looks awesome. And it's just an iPhone. That's all it is most of the time. Um, when I want to record guitar and go into the phone, because what I don't want is my audio here and then my um, visual video. I don't want it different. I don't want to have to line it all up because what happens is when you start cropping stuff and editing it, it gets a bit out of sync and you have to resync it, or at least I do. So I like it all in one piece. You know, I want the what you guys see attached to the audio. So I want it all going straight into the phone. And the best way of doing that, or at least the most affordable way that I've found, is using one of these, which is a Zoom AMS 44. I use this in a good 50% of my videos and it's got four channels on. You basically come out and go straight into the phone. 
it can get a bit noisy, but as long as you have these here, you know, the, the, the levels around 4, 4.5, it doesn't hiss too much. And yeah, it works for me. You know, you can live stream with this thing and everything. And that's what I use for most of my videos to get the audio to you guys. So nothing special, nothing expensive. Not sure how much those are actually, but Zoom UK sent me those. So huge thanks to Zoom. Another way, if I'm micing an amp up, you can use the Zoom AMS44 if you want to get your audio in there. But if you're micing an amp up, what I would suggest doing, I have a Zoom R20. Again, thanks to the guys at Zoom for sending that out. And because the SM57 needs quite a lot of volume hitting it, um, you have to have something where you can crank the volume up unless you're going to get the amp to like super loud like on three and blow the house down, which I don't want to do. Um, so what I do is I put the SM57 in front of usually a HESU cab on most videos. The SM57 then goes into the Zoom R20, which is a portable recording studio. It has a touch screen. It's really, really fancy. It's rigged up over there, so I can't really, yeah, I can't really drag it over to show you guys. But it has all sorts on it, built in drums, MIDI. Does it have MIDI capabilities on it? I think it does. I think you can plug in like a MIDI keyboard like that one over there and control all kinds of things there's you can go straight into it with a guitar there's like a guitar um bit of software in you know, there that you can put in there and it really is a cool piece of gear and i use that whenever you hear an amp being mic'd going into the uh, phone then that is what i'm using i'm using an r20 and i'm using it more or less as a mixer to get the right volumes and everything um one day i will get a decent mic where i'm going from you know like a, a, the r20 so i can talk the way through what i'm doing with the dials kind of like cal bull and a few others do they they use that method i've not really got around to it yet because i'm too lazy um another piece of gear what i use is this one here by sonic cake now i know this is not super high tech or anything and i use it just clicked on there so the mic is not as good a quality you can get a mic as well or there is a mic that comes with it um, this wireless mic that goes from there and it clips on to your collar. That's the way I should use it. I'll probably dig that out and start using it that way now to get a bit better quality audio. I know my voice peaks and goes up and down a bit and guys have commented on that before, but I am I have a, another job. You know, I do this on my days off and I don't, everything's to save time and to get videos done. So yeah, I use that as well. That's a Sonic Cake wireless system for my voice. Now that's enough about YouTube stuff and making videos. I want to talk about my boost because people keep saying what is your favorite boost and this boost here which is a sonic kit blue screen which i mention on the channel all the time this boost i've started using to boost all amps it's really great it's got two modes on it it's super cheap but as you can see it's really well made um, and i just love the damn thing absolutely love it it adds some nice crispy crunchy overtones and really makes your amp pop, you know, and it has two modes in it, like I say, one's a bit darker than the other, but yeah, they're about 30 quid to 40 quid over here in the UK. If you wanna buy one of those, this is where I plug my link, go down there below, there's affiliate. There's an affiliate link, to, uh, little, little bit, ah. go down there below in the description, if you wanna buy one of these, there's an affiliate link, and when you go through that link, it helps support the channel. Anytime you buy anything Sonic Kick, there's tons of pedals, tons of gear on there. If you go through that link first, it helps support me. But that is not why I use the pedal. I use the pedal just because I love it. You know, the affiliate link and everything came afterwards. I was already using their stuff. So that's absolutely super cool and I love it. Somebody asked me about picks the other day. I use these. Now, unfortunately, I'm gonna show you this one first because my dog, can you see my dog? Chihuahuas, the wife's got tons of chihuahuas and they've chewed this Dunlop pick and it annoys me. They love chewing them, they pick them up all over the place. They're all over the house, these. I've got a couple of bags in there. Now I'm a Dunlop artist. The reason I like them is, I mean, at first I had to get used to them, but now that there's no going back, like this is all I use and that's it. And um, I use them because they're really articulate and you can get close to the strings. I like to do pinched harmonics and if you look there, like how close the point is to my fingers, they're so easy to strike. And also I've got used to playing with no gap hardly between my fingers and the strings. Um, so yeah, I just love them. They're, they're super quick, super nice. The fast uh, alternate picking like gallopy riffs uh, are also very easy with them. But like I said, there's a bit of a learning curve. If you're used to something like this here, like this is a, like a regular size, that's a driftwood pick what they sent me the other day. Um, 
if you're used to using one of those, it might take a bit of adjusting. It did take me a couple of days, a couple of, you know, of playing with these, but now I haven't looked back. You know, that's what I use. Basically every color when you buy a Dunlop pick is a different uh, thickness. So it's a purple Jazz 3 uh, purple plectrum. It's Tortex, it's quite grippy, it's nice. I love it. The other thing I want to show you guys what I use. Now this guitar over here, I've not had out of its case for a long time. This was my gigging guitar. Once I got a Jackson endorsement, this guitar came my first guitar that I ever got through the endorsement. I absolutely love the damn thing. As soon as I got it out of the case, I knew that this guitar was going to be perfect. It balances amazing. The neck is absolutely gorgeous on it. Um, really well made, made in Indonesia, super light, and you can jump around with this thing on stage. It's absolutely fantastic. That is not why I've got this guitar over here. I've got this guitar over here to show you this strap here. Now, this strap is a Damasio clip lock clip this is a <laughs> this strap is a damasio clip lock strap obviously it gets its name from this section here kind of like an old school bag you know for, for those of you guys that used to have a boot bag when you were at school in the 80s 90s um yeah it's like that basically so that bit screws i don't know if you can see screws onto the guitar and it stays there fixed and this just clips in and out really super easy to get on and off and obviously that is going absolutely nowhere i've never had one of these bust on me and as for these straps right i've got three i've got this one which is like skull camo don't know if you can see i've got a regular camo strap and i've got a black one and i've had them years and years and years and you know i've still got them now i absolutely love them i think i've got a white one somewhere that i've not even opened yet but yeah you basically take out your um strap button screw it out with the strap, you'll get a, a, a screw and a washer. You basically just screw, you know, in the same hole, you screw the, the new washer and, the, and the, the screw in with the strap, the, the end of the strap on, and then you can take it on and off as you like. Now, Steve Vai was the first person I ever saw with this. And when I saw it, I was like, wow, that solved all my strap problems. I can't believe how amazing it is. And I've used them ever since, and I'm going back years. Whenever Steve Vai God, we're going back to like Passion and Warfare, I think, years there. I think that's when they first came out. That's when I first saw one. Um, and they're absolutely amazing. So safe to use. You're never going to lose your guitar. It's glued to you, almost. So, yeah, some bits of kit that I use and I swear by that probably don't get mentioned that much. Um, is there anything else? I'm just trying to think what else do, 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 that I use. Oh, this over here again, Sonic Cake. This is a Sonic Cake Sonic IR. So if you ever hear me using IRs, I used to use them in um, the two note software. I used to drag the IRs into there and use them that way. But now, whatever it is that's going into my Mac or my interface, now I just go through this and I've got all my IRs loaded onto there, my favorite ones. So that's excellent. Again, affiliate link down in the description if you want to buy anything Sonic Cake. Um, yeah, so that's it. Please do not forget to comment on this video. Let me know if you have any other gadgets, you know, that you use, like, like we can all get together and, and share our gadgets and uh, things that we use that we don't talk about much that don't necessarily make good sounds or anything, or, ch or you know, they're not pieces of gear, but they're just little things that make us happy that we wouldn't change in any way. So yeah, thank you very much for watching. Let me know what you think of the Solar Type X guitars. I absolutely love them. If you own a Solar, so all you solar owners out there, I want you to comment below so much. Are you happy with your, your, your guitars? Are they any good? Do you like them? But more importantly for me, what I want to know is what are the necks like on solar guitars? Thank you very much for watching. I am Neil. Do not forget to subscribe before you go. And we'll see you soon with more gear demos and uh, probably some more gear chat like this as well. Thanks.